right. Uh, well, thank you for coming. Um, I'm the, uh, as, thank you for the introduction. My name is Robert Rosbicki. I'm currently the CTO of Udynamic Glass. Um, by show of hands, how many of you are familiar with what Vue does, what our product is? Okay, not very many, so that gives me some context for how deep I have to go in the technology. Um, so this, uh, I'm really excited to be here at uh, Startup Grind. Uh, I can imagine a lot of you being here at this conference are entrepreneurs. Uh, one thing we all know is entrepreneurs tend to think differently about how the world should be. Um, you've probably heard of the uh, slogan from Apple years ago called Think Different. Uh, at Vue, we kind of have a spin on that where we say, think complete. And what we mean by that is conventional wisdom will say that the first product to enter a market often fails. At Vue, we believe it's the first complete product that enters the market that is ultimately successful. So I'll start with a few ex uh, historical examples. Um, if you go back to the uh, late 1800s and look at something like the steam engine, the steam engine was the main mode of transportation, at least the, uh, the power behind the transportation, for many, many years. Uh, there was a time where people were trying to put steam engines into automobiles, at least automobiles at the time, um, it didn't work very well. Uh, they were clunky, they were dangerous, they were uncomfortable, um, people didn't feel safe in them, and ultimately it never, never really took off. Fast forward to uh, Carl Benz of Mercedes-Benz, uh, and in the late 1800s he was the first to invent what's called the two-stroke internal combustion engine that ran on gas. And this single invention Brought upon, an, uh, brought upon an era in transportation that we still know today as the main form of transportation, transportation on gas-powered engines. Fast forward another 100 years, or a little bit more than that, and now we have Elon Musk and Tesla. Now to be clear, Tesla was not the first company that introduced the electric car. In fact, that concept's been over around for about 100 years. But if you break it down, our belief is that Tesla introduced the first complete electric car. So let's take a look at what that means. Well, it has four doors. It's safe, I can put my family in it. It has a range of about 200 to 300 miles, depending on the battery size. It's got a great user experience, it's very reliable. It starts to feel like a car that you'd like to drive. And so what they've created with the first complete electric car is essentially a tipping point an irreversible change where the electric car now becomes not the exception, but rather the rule in the industry. And as you can see, all the automakers across the world have followed with their own programs on electric vehicles. So this is the first complete electric car that really is disrupting the industry. Now I'll switch gears to Vue. Um, for, what, for those that don't know, Vue produces dynamic glass. Um, as humans, we spend 90% of our time inside buildings, 90%. And considering where we came from over hundreds of thousands of years, that's fairly unnatural for us. It's only the last few hundred thousand years or less than that that we've actually been confined to the built environment. Now about 2,000 years ago, the Romans discovered when they took glass and they put magnesium dioxide, it became transparent. And transparent glass is actually a quite remarkable invention. If you think about it, it's a solid, so it can be used to separate us from the elements, create shelter, keep us warm and safe. But at the same time, I can see through it. So glass was the first medium that started to get integrated into the buildings to try to reconnect us with the outdoors. Glass lets in views and natural light. But glass has some issues. It also lets in heat and glare. The way we solve that today is through a product called a blind. Now the fact that we call it a blind says something about how we think about it. Think about that, it actually blinds you. That's the name of the product. It's kind of amazing that's still the name of a product today. But um, what blinds do basically is that it blocks the glare. It blocks the glare, but it also takes away the view and many people don't realize it still lets in the heat. And so uh, as I drove here from our headquarters in Milpitas today, I drove down 237 and you have these beautiful glass monuments all along 237. And the first day they're built, there's this beautiful glass building. The second day they're built, people move in and they drop the blinds, they block the view, defeat the purpose of why the windows are there in the first place. And if you look at the statistics, about 60% of all window surface area 
is covered with this product called the blind. Okay, so we looked at this problem and said, it's got to be a better solution than this. The other thing that blinds do is it takes away natural light. And when this company was first founded, I've been at the company for about nine years, uh, was founded up in Santa Rosa, California. It was all about the energy. The concept was if the glass can tint, it can block the heat, we can save energy. And it does save energy. But if you look at the typical breakdown of a commercial office building in terms of cost, for every dollar you spend in energy, you spend about $10 in rent, and you spend about $100 to $200 for the occupants. And so the occupants are a much, much more valuable asset, or I should say expense, within the building. And then if you look at the impact that natural light has on occupants, uh, studies have shown, these are not our studies, but studies have shown that people that have natural light and views within their work environment have better quality of sleep, have more sleep, they're more productive, more creative, they have better memory function. Uh, there's a recent study that was done by Dr. Alan Hedge um, at Cornell, and he studied buildings with static glass and blinds and buildings with view glass and determined, this is just recent, that buildings with view glass, people have headaches 50% less of the time, have 60% less eye strain, and are 50% more alert and aware. On top of that, they're more productive. And relative to blinds and shades, view lets in, view glass, dynamic glass, lets in about two to three times more light. So it's fairly substantial. So on the most expensive part of the building, which is the people, you're having a dramatic effect on that work environment which promotes health and productivity. So how do we do this? Uh, we essentially apply a series of coatings onto glass. These are very, very thin coatings uh, that create essentially an active panel that can tint on demand. The coatings are about, all five coatings all together are only about one micron in thickness. Now put that in perspective, a human hair is about 50 microns in thickness. So this is a nano coating at about 1 50th of a human hair thickness that creates this ability to tint and clear on demand. It's not just the coating. Uh, there's a whole system behind there. But if you want to get a sense for how it works, uh, here's a rendering of a space. Typically, it would be south-facing, west-facing space. Um, the before image is showing the conventional solution of blinds. Uh, you're blocking the view, again, still letting in the heat, reducing the natural light. When you replace the static glass and blinds with dynamic glass, you regain your views, which is why you have a window in the first place. You control glare. You control heat from ever coming in the building. You have more natural light. And you fundamentally transform the space to be more productive, healthier, and beneficial for the occupants. Now, as the sun transverses from the south to the west, the south facade will start to lighten up, the west, west facade will start to tint, and basically the building is breathing and living with the environment as the environment changes through the day. It's a very simple concept. So it goes beyond just the panel. Uh, we have two other parts that are critical. One is the controls. Uh, every panel or every window gets installed uh, or gets mated with a microcontroller. The microcontroller tells the window what to do. And then we've got a whole set of software and algorithms behind the product that tells the product how to function. Uh, you can typically have the product run in the background where you just set it and forget it. You can override it with the uh, app on your mobile device. Um, all the glass is actually cloud connected, remotely accessible. We have a network operations center in Milpitas that monitors all the windows we've installed all over the world. Um, they can monitor issues, they can provide upgrades, it's all connected. So, um, it's a very connected product that is made up of the tintable panels, the controls, as well as the software. Now that's really the complex stuff. But come back to the theme of think complete. What, is, what makes a complete product? We tried to just really mattered for our product. And we start with the most important, which is the user experience. Okay. At VIEW, we don't say we make the smartest electrochromic glass. We don't say we make the most connected electrochromic glass. We don't say we make the fastest switching electrochromic glass. We say we create delightful human environments. That's our mission, delightful human environments. Okay? 
And we do that because when the user walks in the room, the glass looks like glass, just like the Tesla car looks like a car. It's simple, it's intuitive, it just works. All the complexity, our customers never see. They just see the transform transformative product that we've provided to them that provides the benefits to the occupants. Second was easy installation. Um, we are a supplier to the construction industry, and we haven't forgotten that. Most, this is where I think a lot of entrepreneurs make mistakes in thinking about how to deploy their technology. They have, they want to disrupt the market, they want to have a disruptive technology, but they never think about deployment. And if you disrupt the channel, it's a very, very hard thing to deploy your technology. So with Vue, we were very focused on how do we disrupt the window with this revolutionary coding, but keep, every, keep everything else the same, such that the channel is going to be largely the same as it is today, and we're going to keep that channel lubricated in terms of how we get the glass installed in buildings. So if you break it down into two parts, the panel that we sell, except for the coating, looks like any other double pane window. Okay, same form factor, same materials. It's very similar to a standard, what's called low emissivity, low emissivity window. The network that it connects into, all the wiring comes uh, designed for your building. It's got the, uh, the lengths cut to size, so you're not splicing in the field. All the wiring is pre-terminated, so it just connects like Lego blocks. It's very simple. So that's one, is try to keep the form factor of the product to where the channel's not gonna reject it. Number two, is try to use the existing trades for how glass is installed today. So today, when you sell glass, you sell it to a glazier, and the glazier installs it into the building. So we've trained glaziers to sell all glass. It's a little bit more complicated, but not much. Um, and we use a low voltage electrician to install the network that the glass connects into. And so we had to go through some basic training, but we didn't have to create a whole new trade to install this product. So it's very important for us as we try to disrupt this industry with a revolutionary product, it's going into an evolutionary industry. And so you've got to make sure that channel is not disrupted, otherwise it prevents deployment of the product. Number three uh, is unreliability. Um, many of you have probably heard the saying, you don't build a product, you don't build a service, you build a reputation. Okay, in the construction industry, where things are expected to last 30, 40, 50 years, reliability is critically important to acceptance of the product in the marketplace. And it starts with the fundamentals. So when we went back and looked at this nine years ago, electrochromics as a technology has been around for 50 years. It was discovered in 1964. There are many different material systems out there that are electrochromic. Some are organic, some are inorganic, some are liquid, some are solid. And we chose a system that was all inorganic ceramic materials because fundamentally those are durable for long periods of time under UV and heat, which is what our product's exposed to. About 90% of the research in electrochromics is in organics, organic materials. It's fundamentally easier to make an organic-based window, but it's not fundamentally robust under UV and heat. And over time, little by little, it's going to degrade. So in order to build this reputation around durability, and convincing our customers that our windows can last 30, 40, 50 years, we started with a fundamentally more durable material, which is all inorganic and all ceramic. The second part is often when people are introducing new products to market, they're testing to pass. They want to test, check the box, pass the standard. But that's usually not enough, especially in an industry like construction, which is so risk averse. So the approach we've taken is not test the pass, but test to fail. So we've got a lab in Milpitas where everything is designed to be made and broken, so make and break. So instead of just testing to pass, we turn the knobs on things like temperature and humidity and UV and voltage and really try to figure out where is the cliff, where does this product really break down and make sure that's not a condition that's gonna be exposed to in its lifetime. And so the, the, the thought process about testing to pass versus testing to fail is very, very critical when you're trying to build a reputation around durability and reliability for a product like this. So if I take this back to how we think about a complete product, it's user experience number one, 
it's ease of installation and deployment of this disruptive technology, number two, and it's building a reputation around reliability, which is number three. And if you can do this with your products, I think you'll be able to essentially go from the early adopters, the term cross the chasm into the mainstream, and really achieve that tipping point to where your technology, your product becomes the irreversible change in the marketplace that really changes it forever. So that's the view story, and thank you for your attention.